The streak photography is where we, we do a time-based difference of, of images. So what streak photography is, is, is having a, a high-speed camera shot and then extracting one column of pixels out of each shot and putting them side by side. So it's, it's a very different way of looking at pictures and when each one, each of those columns is now separated by a frame, so there's uh, a, um, a time difference between each column. So this becomes a photo finish camera. Have you all seen the pictures of a horse going across a finish line? They want to know how much one bicycle race finished first before another. So this is a form of streak photography. Photo finish photography is, is another form of it. So let's, let's do a fun little demonstration with streak photography. Uh, just because it's a very different type of photography than you guys have been uh, seen before in the past. Plus you get to see some, some high speed video cameras. So this is peripheral streak photography and to get enough images quickly we're going to use a high speed camera for this. And this, is, this separates normal photography from really strange photography. You're not going to be walking down the street and seeing a peripheral streak photograph anytime soon. Um, it's a very special area of photography and you have to develop some some kind of special pieces of computer code to make it happen But luckily we have those here. I quote my son. My son says only good things come out of pelican cases So what this camera is this is the our edutronic model here at RIT. So this is a high-speed uh, camera and of course this this camera uh, does have some some really cool features. Uh, this, this camera records time that has already passed by. So it records video but into a buffer. And this is the way most modern high-speed cameras work. You're like, if we, if we wanted to record those balloons popping, we could do this. Uh, we would record, we would tell the camera to take the picture after we saw the balloon pop. And that's because it's constantly taking the last four or five seconds of time and laying it into a buffer. And only do we, when we trigger it does that buffer go into memory. We need a lens, and this actually has a Nikon mount on it. So our frame rate is gonna be thousands of a second. And keep in mind that I can <clears throat> never have a shutter that is slower than the frame rate. And as we come off here, we get the, the picture of, of Chris, he's out of focus. I got to focus and I also have to raise that, that tripod a little bit. You also want to rotate around my center of gravity. The center of your head. Oh, that's easy. You know, right there. <laughs> it's a hard, sometimes not, not the easiest thing to do. Does that look like it's in focus, like somewhat? So can you, you turn these things on? They only turn on. Like there's no, no, yeah, there's no, no right. this is all the way down. yeah, I rewired them yeah. so that there's no, the, okay. the resistors were bad. So I, I took the resistors out of the system. Do you guys have any idea what we're doing? What? No. Okay. So he's going to rotate. He's going to rotate around. We're going to take a picture of him rotating. And then we're going to extract one column of pixels and put it right next to the next column of pixels. Can you kind of envision what that picture is going to look like? Yes. It's going to look sort like of. a texture map. They, they often use them for animation, for putting them on cylinders and be like, hey, a person in the old video games. You ready? I'll try it. Okay. So go. Take about three seconds to turn all the way around. Keep going. Keep going. The trigger. Did we do something? It's saving. Okay, so here, now it's. Was that okay? Yeah, I think Was we got something. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, we just took we just took uh, three thousand three thousand pictures. So we can see that he's he's not used to rotating because he's rotating more around his chest than he is around his his neck. So there's going to be a, a bunch of variation, but that's okay. I'll. It'll be, it'll you come across as artistic. Again. It'll be artistic. Rotator, you do that thing. Over here, I'm going to run a program, which is called slit cam version 103. Uh, 
And this is run in the processing environment. And this is a piece of software specifically designed for doing slit extraction for races, for explosions, for looking at timing differences between each frame. So here's the back side of his head, which looks pretty good. The, probably the front of his head will look OK. We should do that again and get a better chunk of video. So here we got the extraction. It's, it's pretty good this time. So it's pretty good, pretty good for Halloween. So uh, this, is, this is the odd one. Like, why would anyone do this? We have no idea. You can start to see his, his picture now is just his mustache <laughs> as it rotates around his, his, his head. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, we have invented a new form of mustache photography that has probably never been done before. Next book is mustache photography. There we go. The, the beauty about these, these images, especially of, of the face, is they, they have a tendency to set, to set off all porn detectors that are out there. They're porn detectors that look for big chunks of curvy pieces of skin, which the, the British are currently known for. As, as you guys know this, the British have a, have a big uh, project on that.